Welcome back to Points Wellness. My name is Warren Schick. I'm the owner and lead practitioner here at the clinic. And today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about um, hip dysfunction and some self-care techniques that you can do to help improve um, hip function and uh, reduce pain. So one of the things that we see in the clinic here, uh, due to our um, lifestyle, we spend a lot of time in a seated position. Uh, either for work or we're driving in our cars or um, uh, through activities, whether it be biking or something of that nature, uh, what happens is uh, we're in this kind of forward flex position, hip flex position. Uh, so we see some tightness that develops uh, over the course of time. And that tightness uh, is of often related to uh, inhibition that occurs um, in opposite or um, antagonistic muscle groups. So um, what I would say is in this particular case with uh, hip flexion uh, we see a lot of inhibition in the glutes. So the glute um, max and the glute medius are two kind of common muscle groups that we see as uh, inactive in our patient base. And so what we do is we prescribe uh, an exercise to help restore um, We'll use the term muscle activation. So we're trying to improve the body's uh, proprioceptive feedback from the receptors in the hip joint back up to the spinal cord and up to the, the higher centers of the brain. And the way we do that is we use um, isometric exercises. What we're trying to do is um, shorten the tissue and apply um, a mild to moderate um, force or tension through that tissue. and um, hold it over a period of time, and then through repetition on a day-to-day -day basis, um, sometimes depending on how much pain the individual's in, we might recommend it um, on a day-to-day -day basis a couple times a day to perform these exercises to help restore that uh, natural uh, proprioceptive uh, feedback to the brain. And one of the common exercises that I find very helpful for people to connect and really intentionally move their body um, to feel the musculature that I'm referring to is a, um, a wall exercise. So what I'm going to have you do if you wanted to follow along is you want to position yourself next to the wall so your shoulder um, brushes up against it and your feet in this position are directly below the shoulders. And uh, before we begin, what I want you to, to do is start thinking about um, pelvic position. So we're trying to return us as close to uh, neutral as possible. So we want to make sure that we're um, uh, across the hips, we're uh, balanced. And then we want to make sure that um, we are in fact um, bringing our hips so they're directly below our shoulder and below our head. So often with um, all of this shortening um, from sitting, we find ourselves in kind of a, a rounded low back and rounded upper back uh, positions. What we want to make sure we're doing is we're pulling our, our hip or tailbone directly under the top of our head and then positioning ourselves before we start this exercise. So we have a neutral low back, um, we're pulling our shoulder blades together and our head back so that it's uh, again the ear is over the shoulder. And once we've found this position, what you're going to do is you're going to lift one knee and brace it into the wall. Once you've first made this shift in um, pressure, we want to make sure that we haven't lost our pelvic position. So we're going to make sure that our pelvis is directly into the shoulders and that we haven't again sunk in through the hip. If you're finding these types of things difficult, it probably means that there's some instability either in the low back or through this hip. Um, in supporting our pelvis across the, um, across the pelvis. So uh, what I want to do is once you're in that position and you feel confident that you have everything staying put once you lift this foot, and then what you do is you're going to drive your knee in towards the wall and increase the pressure across the pelvis and in through the hip and down to the floor. So if I can walk you through it one final time, you lift the knee brace into the wall as if you were going to push yourself off the wall, but resisting that through this hip and pelvis. What you should feel is your um, glute max, glute medius, your TFL and uh, glute minimus, all these muscles that stabilize this hip, go under a lot of work because they're now supporting 
um, the side of the, the body that's uh, resting against the wall, but then also pushing into the wall. So we're kind of creating this um, co-contraction between one hip and the other hip. And you're gonna brace for six seconds, and you're gonna do it six different times. And then you take a break and you switch sides. And you might do this one or two times a day, and you might do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, depending on how much, um, you know, if you're in uh, pain or dis, uh, discomfort, um, you'll definitely want to consult with someone, but um, these are types of exercises that can help restore that pelvic position and increase um, muscular strength and uh, uh, contractibility across the pelvis. So um, I hope this exercise helps, and if you have any questions, uh, please do reach out to us directly, and uh, have a great day.